Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we will be building the bubble chart. If you somehow, you know, already glanced over the code that we have right now, you will find that this is really similar to the code that we had from last time. And in fact, that is true. We're only going to be messing around with the force um, attribute of the force simulation. And um, for those of you who watched the last video, maybe skip two minutes further into the video. Um, because I, I, I believe that most of my viewers probably just jump into this random video and they have no idea what the last video was. So I'm going to take a minute to explain stuff. So in D3, if you want to draw something that is usually spectacular and something that looks like it is moved around with, with forces, what you're going to be using is D3.4 simulation, which is only available after version uh, 4, I believe. And I'm using version 4 here, but if I use version 5, I think it should work as well. Yeah. Now, if you do version 3, uh, it's not there. And if you're in version 3, you'll be using something called D3.layout, I believe, or D3.force.layout, something like that. Now, what force simulation does is that it takes in nodes and an array of them. And each of these nodes probably has some attribute attached to it. But, <coughs> but after you run it through the force simulation, it is going to in each of these individual nodes, um, give it new attribute. And some of these attributes include the X and Y position and the, um, the velocity vector. I um, mean, the, the speed of the element traveling in the X direction and the speed of the element traveling in the Y direction. And then the force simulation is gonna move it by that much every tick. It's gonna consider the VX and VY attributes. And another uh, thing that it assigns, FX, FY, and index, which I'm not gonna be talking about more in this video then okay and but it doesn't really change any attributes if you just run the 3 4 simulation nodes uh, forces are what you apply to force simulation in order to change the attribute in the nodes and hopefully these kind of makes intuitive sense to you if there's a force called charge it probably makes sense that it's going to make the X and Y values of the nodes closer and closer with each other, right? Uh, 300 of strength means that they are attracting to, to each other. So the X and Ys are probably moving towards each other. Center means that uh, we're, in the calculation, we're probably also going to be putting the nodes closer and closer to the center. And spoilers alert, this, this force is the one that allows us to make this thing happen. Anyways, that's really it for force simulation. And then afterwards, this is, um, and then the also really important thing is to realize that force simulation, after all, is just doing some mathematical calculation. It is just to put the assembled data so we can use it. And you can't really draw anything in uh, with D through the JS without using the function append. And th this is where we actually draw the things. And and uh, this is where we're drawing the things. But there's actually somewhere else that we change the elements attributes and this is right here and the reason we have a separate function to do this is because uh, at every tick of the simulation we're going to be updating these attributes and we're not putting these here here right here something like this because we don't want to be because the only way to call that every single time are for simulation ticks which is really rapid uh, the only way to, if we want to have the X and Y attributes there is if we were to recall this whole thing, right? Which is hugely inefficient. So we put it in the tick function. Okay, so that's it. Now, let's go to the, now for the people that came from the last video, now we can get to the link part. I mean, we, we can start from the example from last week, I mean, from the last video, and then build it towards what we have with the bubble map. As we can see here, for first of all, this is really similar to a bubble map, actually. Now, one thing that you probably immediately realize is that your nodes are repelling from each other instead of being attracted to each other. You see, like if I move this towards that, uh, it's moving away. Um, there's two things that are affecting this. First of all, there's a charge force. And second of all, there's a link force, which has a default distance that they're trying to um, keep the keep um, different nodes at. So let's remove this, right? There's absolutely no reason that we should be linking stuff. And now we can see um, if I push the C node against that A node, it's still trying to move it. So it's probably because of this. So let's try removing this. 
Um, but now there's a problem, these nodes are just static, so we actually want them to be moving towards each other. And so we are going to use a positive strain. And I'm going to use a pretty big number. Yeah. Here's the problem. The force simulation takes in these nodes, but has no idea where the bounds of the nodes are. We, we never provided the radius, right? The, the radius doesn't exist here. And so for the simulation, there's no way for it to know where to place each of the nodes away from each other so that they're not like crossing each other. So that it looks like there are actually rigid bodies that have physics applied to them. To do this, we pull up the API. You know, you, you want to build a bubble map. You, 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 you type in bubble. And then you see, you can also simulate circles, disk with collisions, such as bubble charts or bee, bee swarm plots. And then you open a new, and then you open this, maybe it's going to show you some code. Uh, it doesn't. It shows you Obama and stuff. And the thing that they were talking about, as you can see, the Democrats were talking more about, interesting, they are talking about more about jobs than uh, Republicans. Uh, that's not what we should be worried about. As you can see, the Republicans did talk about business a lot more. Sorry, I just said we shouldn't be worried about that. Um, yeah, and then we're like, okay, so that's not cold. So what about let's search up collision? Okay, there's another link to a collision. Oh, nice. Right, and then we see collision. It uh, already told, told us that it is a force. So we can expect to be able to call it with dot force collision. And it says the collision force treat nodes as circles with given radius rather than points. So it prevents nodes from overlapping. We're like, okay, that does that gets the job done. So let's just write this in. As we can see to instantiate it, it's D3 the force collide and we've got to put in the radius. Collide. And let's do five. And there's some other attributes that we can be moved, changing around, uh, like strength and iterations, but let me just leave it at the default to see what's up. This is quite interesting. I'm going to make the radius a little bigger, so I think that will help. Because I think at the beginning, the, the notes, yeah. So as you can see, this is already quite perfect. You know, you, you can always mess around. You know, you can decrease the strength if you want the animation to be so that if I move this, these circles will move into place slower than it usually does. Right now, now it's moving in incredibly fast back to original position. And you would change around the force collide radius if you want the bounds to be considered further. So you do something like... 30. Yeah, so you can see we're, we cannot penetrate into each other's category territory. Yeah. Now, this might pose some problem for those of you who have specific um, simulations to make. For example, if you want the nodes to have different radius than each other, and let's let's solve that problem real quick. So instead of doing um, and so the data is probably going to get access to the R attribute. And let's do 10 for this one. Maybe radius equals to 15 for this one. Uh, and maybe we have a big boy right here, 50. And maybe we have a little bit smaller boy right here, 35. Um, first of all, the radius obviously did not change. Now, as we can recall, we can... We bounded the data to the circle, so we can actually use that right here. It is bounded to text and nodes, so the circles can use it too. And we can just do function d, return d dot, what is it, radius. Right. Uh, and that works. But as we can see, the bounds are not working properly. The DNC are overlapping. So we can actually just do, instead of 30, we can do um, function d return the dots radius. Now that is what I call beauty. And you know, now now you can build your own little Agario game. 
that it, that doesn't allow your nose to each other, to eat each other because your nose will be uh, will have rigid body and cannot intersect with each other. So yeah, um, that was a little example of how to have custom radius. Now to now I think when I started out doing D three intuition like that didn't really uh, appeal to me and just light on me all, all of a sudden but you know it came along with a lot of practice reading a lot of people's code and really digging deep and making sure that I know what each of the let's say forces in someone's code meant right and stuff like that then uh, I kind of just made a realization that data kind of just you know kind of exists all around and you can manipulate it if you want to change something and yeah it's this flow of the data that i kind of figured out so and it made me realize how to change things dynamically so that's it for this video that's all i want to show you guys uh bubble map with custom radius and i'll see you guys in the next one and the next one maybe it's going to be one of the last videos in the series yeah i'll probably talk about geography with maybe uh integrated with the bubble map bubble chart and we can see an example of that right here bubble chart well that's not it bubble map that's not it either yep that right there so yep i will see you guys in the next one